All right, so first up, we've got the Talanzia. Um, you really can't go wrong with these guys. They're a really easy care plant that come in a lot of different shapes and sizes. They're relatively easy to care for. You wanna give these guys bright and direct light, mist them often, when, just when you think about it. And then about every two weeks or so, you wanna give these guys a good soak in some lukewarm water for about an hour. Once you pull them out of the water, you wanna flip them upside down to let all the water drain out to prevent any rot on them. And then you can stick them back uh, in their homes. These are a really fun one to style in your urban jungle because you can kind of stick them wherever. They don't require a pot or anything. So here we've got the Talanzia Xerographica and then a Iolantha Fuego Clump. You can see you get a good red color on these guys. All right, next up on our list, we have the Bella Palm. I've got it here in a four inch pot, a six inch pot as well as an eight inch pot. This is uh, sort of the standard size on these guys that you'll find in your local nursery. But these guys are relatively easy to care for, pet safe. You wanna give them bright indirect light. They can tolerate some lower light, but if you really wanna see them grow, bright indirect is gonna be ideal for them. Let that soil dry slightly between waterings and you should be all set. These guys are really low maintenance that are definitely worth taking a look at. They're really great for adding that sort of tropical feel to your space. The one thing with these guys, you don't wanna let them get too dry as you'll start to find brown crispy tips on these leaves. All right, here we have one of my absolute favorite pet safe families of plants, and these are Peperomia. So here I've got a couple four inch options to show you. Peperomia come in all different shapes and sizes and are really a fun variety to explore. These are sort of what I first started with when I first started collecting. So here we have the Peperomia Quito. This is one that sort of just popped up on the market. That's definitely worth taking a look at. You get a really nice yellowy orange color to the leaves. Next is one that you'll find pretty much everywhere and that is the Obtusifolia. This is the green one, um, but you can also find the yellow variegated form. A really, really easy care plant to check out. Here we have the Peperomia Rosso. This one stays a little bit more compact and it stays lower to the ground. These guys also flower like crazy, especially if you're fertilizing within your collection. So you can see these really neat little flowers here. You can chop them back to promote more foliar growth or you can leave the flowers if you wish. I've got two more Peperomia to show you here, some larger options. We've got the Peperomia Pepper Spot here in a six inch basket. I think this plant is just so adorable with those red stems and those tiny little circular green leaves. Everything about this plant is so adorable. Another Peperomia with some round leaves worth checking out is the Peperomia Hope. Another one here in a six inch hanging basket. Like I said, these are pet safe. Uh, pretty drought tolerant, really, really easy care plants. I always recommend them for beginners. All right, next up on our list is another pet safe option and that's gonna be the ponytail palm. I've got this guy here in a four inch pot, an eight inch pot, and then this absolutely massive 14 inch pot. So most often you'll find these guys in four inch or six inch pots. This is about as large as I would expect it to get in your home. But you can see it is quite impressive and really easy care on these guys. While they are called a parlor palm, they're actually not a true palm. They're a bit more closely related to the aloe family. You can let the soil dry out on these guys quite a bit. The stump stores quite a bit of water and then you wanna give them lots of bright and direct light. Um, this is another one you want to be careful about letting it dry out too much as the tips of the leaves will start to get brown and crispy. And while these guys are pet safe, if you've got curious cats around, this might be one that I, stray I would stray away from as they do tend to catch the attention of cats. Specifically, they like to chew on the leaves. All right, here we have an absolute staple for any houseplant collector, and that is the spider plant, another pet safe option for you. I've pulled a couple different sizes to share with you. So first we've got the two inch here. These guys are so adorable. And then for four inch, we've got both the standard spider plant. This is sort of the one that you'll find everywhere. 
and then the curly spider plant, also called the spider plant bonnie. Uh, a bit more compact growth and the leaves are very curly on these guys. And then I've also got this eight inch basket to show you here. This guy is looking absolutely gorgeous and you can see it's even starting to put out little babies here so to propagate this plant you would just snip here at this stem and then stick this little pup in water or soil it's a perfect way to share your plant with friends and family or get a really nice full basket uh, really quickly these are really easy to grow you want to give them bright and direct light let that soil dry slightly between waterings once again being careful not to let it get too dry as the tips of the leaves will start to get brown quite quickly with spider plants especially this is true um, but really easy care a must-have plant for anyone all right the next pet safe option i've got to show you guys are the pilea family this is a really fun one with some great variety within it so here we've got the pilea aluminum and then we've got the pilea moon valley as well these guys are in little two inch pots but you can also find them readily available in four inch pots as well these guys are looking absolutely beautiful and this is one that likes a little bit more moisture um, and you want to shoot for bright indirect light on these guys once again here on this moon valley you get that really interesting texture uh, some may say a acquired taste but definitely a really unique plant to take a look at all right, this next plant I am super excited to tell you guys about, and that is the cast iron plant. Another pet safe option for you. Really, really low maintenance, and these guys are often overlooked, but I think everybody should have one in their collection. You get this beautiful dark green foliage on these guys. There's also quite a few different variegated options as well. But here today, we've got the green form in both a six inch pot and an eight inch pot. A fun little story behind these guys, these were actually one of the first house plants dating back to the Victorian area, dating back to the Victorian era. Um, so really easy care on these guys. They're used to low light. You want to let the soil dry on these guys. Beneath the soil, you've got really big rhizomes that definitely don't want to be kept wet for too long as they'll start to rot. Um, these guys are a bit of a slower grower, but if you're in the market for something with some good vertical foliage, that's really low maintenance. Um, I think a lot of people tend to look towards snake plants for that, but definitely check out the cast iron plant or aspidistra. All right, so this next family is one that I am super excited to see making a resurgence amongst plant collectors, and that is bromeliads. These guys produce absolutely beautiful flowers, as you can see here. These are probably the ones that you're most used to seeing, and that is the Guzmania. These ones you can typically find in just about any plant store. But then, of course, we've got some more exciting varieties to show you here as well. In a six inch pot, we've got the Bromeliad Green Eyes. And then we've also got this adorable little Cryptanthus or Earth Star here. These guys are another great pet safe option for you. You wanna let the soil dry just slightly between waterings, not completely. And then when you do water, you wanna water sort of into the center of the plant here, allowing the water to trickle down to the soil. All right, this next one is another gorgeous pet safe option for you. And that is the bird's nest fern. Got two different varieties here for you. And then we've also got the Bird's Nest Victoria. This one is in a four inch pot. So similar look, but you've got that rippled leaf margin there. That's a bit more visually interesting. <laughs> they are lower light tolerant. Um, you wanna give them like indirect light. Some dappled sun is fine, but definitely avoid direct sun on these guys. Maintain even moisture uh, in the soil. Think sort of like a moist cake. You don't want the soil sopping wet and really heavy, but you also don't want it to dry too much. All right, up next, we've got the last of our pet safe options to show you here in this video today, and that is gonna be Haworthia. These are the perfect plant for your desk or a smaller space as they are definitely a slower grower. 
and really, really easy care on these guys. Let the soil dry between waterings and that's about it. Give it lots of bright light. Full sun is totally fine for these guys, so southern exposure if you can. Um, here we've got the Haworthia zebra. Really, really visually interesting foliage on these guys. Then we've got your standard Haworthia here. This one commonly is referred to as the Haworthia crocodile, I believe. And then sort of a more fun variety is the Haworthia moon. This isn't one that you come by all that often, but definitely worth checking out if you can find it in your local plant store. All right, so these next plants, while they're not pet safe, they are definitely very, very exciting. And that is the Croton. It's a variety that comes in all different shapes and sizes. I've pulled quite a few here today to share with you. So we've got these Croton Petra from a four inch to a six inch, all the way up to a 17 inch. So I wouldn't necessarily expect them to get this size within your home. However, it is definitely possible given the right conditions. You wanna give these guys lots and lots of light, especially if you want to maintain this incredible color that their leaves produce. And then as for watering, you wanna water when the soil is just slightly dry. You don't wanna let these guys get too dry, especially if you're giving them lots of light. They will be pretty quick to start dropping their leaves. Here we've got the Croton Mame. Really, really awesome plant. It almost looks like it's on fire. All right, here we have another absolute staple for any plant collector, regardless of your experience level, and that is Sansevieria, or snake plant, or mother-in-law's tongue. These are a super popular plant, and for good reason. They are so, so easy to care for and come in lots of different shapes and sizes. So you can see we've got some more compact ones here. This is a, a variegated snake plant. Cylindrica, a little less common, and really, really interesting foliage on these guys. Hanii as well. Sansevieria laurentii. This is probably the most common one that you'll find at any plant store or garden center. So we've got the six inch and the eight inch here. So this is a really great low light plant. We wanna let the soil dry between waterings on these guys um, and patience is a must with these. They definitely are slower growers. If you're keeping it in lower light, I definitely would pull back a bit on the watering. All right, we can't film a trending plants video without mentioning the famous peace lily. These guys are absolutely gorgeous, both in and out of bloom. Typically when you find them at a plant store or a garden center, they'll have these gorgeous little white flowers. However, these do die off eventually. Um, within your house, I wouldn't expect to get the same amount of blooms that it'll typically have when you purchase it, but with proper fertilization and watering, it's definitely possible to get them to rebloom in your home. These are a lower light plant for sure. You want to avoid any direct sun as these thin leaves will burn quite quickly. And then as for watering, you want to keep the soil evenly moist. So once again, think like a moist cake, not sopping wet, um, but not too dry. So we've got a couple different options here. We've got the four inch pot and then the six inch pot. We've got a 10 inch. This is definitely a great option for those that are looking for a large leaf plant uh, in a lower light setting. All right, next we have pothos here in four inch pots, both the green queen and the golden pothos, which is probably the most popular. This is another one that I would say is an absolute must have for any plant collector. When these guys are happy, they grow like crazy. Definitely a really rewarding plant to grow super easy to propagate. You wanna give these guys lots of bright indirect light and water when the soil is dry. So we've got these four inch pots here, and then we've also got these beautiful hanging eight inch baskets. And then another fun one that I wanted to show you is this eight inch staked pothos. 
So as you can see, if you allow yours to climb up a vertical structure, you'll promote much larger leaves on these guys, and in some cases, they'll even fenestrate. So something like a moss pole would be perfect to mount your golden pothos on. It's a bit more of a unique way to display it and makes it a bit more of a perfect fit for somewhere that needs some vertical foliage. All right, here we have the ZZ plant, another super low maintenance plant to check out. If you're looking for a plant to set and forget, Miss ZZ plant is your girl. We've got it here in a three inch pot, a four inch pot, 10 inch pots as well. So these are a really, really easy care plant. Uh, you wanna allow that soil to dry between waterings. Similar to the cast iron plant beneath the soil, there's really big rhizomes that aren't gonna wanna be kept moist for too long. So allowing that soil to dry evenly is really, really important. As you can see, those thick rhizomes will fill out the pot quite quickly. And if you leave it for too long, there's a chance it'll break your pot. All right, here we have another absolute staple. That is the Crassula ovata or jade plant. I've got it here in both a four inch pot and a two inch pot to share with you guys. This is a super easy care plant, lots of bright light for them, uh, and then allow that soil to dry between waterings and you should be just fine. These guys are really easy to propagate with their leaves. I've actually had a jade plant running through my family for many years now, passed down through leaf propagation. So this is definitely a fun one to share with your friends and family and really, really easy to care for. All right, this next plant is another one of my absolute favorite common house plants and that is the Aglionema. So I pulled a couple different ones to share with you here today. There's lots of variety within the Aglionema family, lots of different colors and sizes. So here we have the Aglionema leprechaun in a four inch pot. We've got the Aglionema Golden Bay. This guy's got some gorgeous silver leaves here. So as you can see, Aglionema do get quite big over time. These guys are really easy to care for. You wanna allow the soil to dry slightly between waterings. The most common problem I see people having with their Aglionema is that they're overwatered. So make sure that soil is just slightly dry before you water it. You wanna shoot for bright indirect light on these guys. They are lower light tolerant, but if you really wanna see them grow, shoot for bright indirect. All right, here we have some Dracaena to show you guys. First in four inch pots, we've got the Dracaena elegans. This is a very common one that you'll find uh, at just about any plant store. Looks really similar to bamboo, but it gets quite large over time, which I'll show you here in a second. Another really fun Dracaena here is this variegated one that's a little bit more compact, but of course will also get quite large over time. This is the Song of India. Really beautiful yellow leaves on these guys. This is a really fun one to watch grow, can get quite large over time. I can see these guys being very trendy this year for their beautiful foliage, easy care, and they are perfect for just about any space with how adaptable they are. All right, the last plant I've got to share with you guys today are Anthurium. So here I've got a couple of the florist Anthurium. This is the red variety that you find pretty readily available. And then slightly less common is the purple anthurium. These guys are quite a bit easier to care for than a lot of the more collector anthurium, such as this Radicans Cross Luxurians here. If you're looking to get your hands on one of these guys, I definitely recommend giving one of these more common anthurium varieties a go first. So these guys have got really thick roots, so you wanna allow that soil to dry just slightly between waterings to prevent any risk of rot. These guys definitely are tolerant to a little bit of a lower light setting. Whether it was the golden pothos or the ZZ plant, I hope you guys found a new plant in this video to check out, whether it's with Peace, Love, and Happiness Club or at your local plant store. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Peace out.